Alright, everybody, what what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the four-week check-in for the Major Key Physique six-week fat loss challenge. I'm really excited to bring you guys this video today. You know, results are there. There's been times where I've, I've second-guessed myself. I wake up feeling skinny, feeling, you know, weak in the gym. But having that plan, trusting the process, you'll get the results. And so here we are, four weeks in. We've got two more weeks to go to really, really tighten it up. But, you know, I am really happy with how things are going. It's been four weeks of, of hard dieting, I'm not gonna lie. It's not easy to lose body fat. And, and the reality is, is that when you're feeling hungry, when you're feeling, you know, like your, your stomach's growling, you're feeling empty, those are the times that you will be fucking really tapping into that body fat and those are the times that you really want to extend that feeling if you want to do it in the most efficient way possible. Possibly not the most effective, but definitely the most efficient. So what I really wanted to bring you guys through this series was my my transformation in six weeks. I wanted to show you guys what was possible in just six weeks. Whilst I've been doing this, I've been thinking to myself and I'm like, well, Someone coming on with me, you know, someone who, who hasn't dieted before, who hasn't sort of trained hard in the gym before, they would not be wanting to do things as fast or as, you know, drastically as I have. So I think going forward, I think the transformation package that I'm going to offer clients is going to be a 12 week transformation, not a six week transformation. And with that said, I may even continue this transformation for 12 weeks just to show you guys exactly what can be achieved. But for now, we're gonna stick with six weeks. We've got our measurement table here. As you can see, neck, shoulders, chest. Jeez, it's hard to read that back with it. <laughs> neck, shoulders, chest, waist, left arm, right arm, left thigh, right thigh, left calf, right calf. As you can see, day one, we took all our measurements. Day 14, we took measurements again. And here we are at day 28, and we're gonna take our measurements once again. Now. I did mention this in the last video, it does take a little bit of time, you know, it might take 5-10 minutes, but the thing you want to make sure of is that, you know, wherever you're putting the tape measure around, this is what it looks like, something like this, okay, wherever you're putting it around, whether that be your neck or your arm or leg, make sure it's in the same spot as the last time. Consistency is key, not only with diet and training, but also with measuring your progress, progress pictures you need to be in the same lighting, same spot, same time of day. Same angle with the camera. You need your measurements to be around the exact same spots to get the exact, you know, consistent measurements. And of course the weight as well. When you're taking your weight, you want to be on the same scale. You don't want to be using all different scales. You know, some scales can be two kilos different from the other. Really can be. And so the, the scale I've been using is the one down at the gym. This morning I got up, I put my track pants on, I put a t-shirt on and I went down to the gym and I took my weight. So here it is. So I'm going to call that 93.15 kilos. The first weigh-in we had was 99.1. After two weeks, it was 95.2. And now after another two weeks, it's 93.15. Now, I did have track pants on. If I took them off, it would have been 92 point something. So, you know, we're definitely making progress. We're definitely losing weight. Now, weight is important, of course. And I've got to be honest with you guys. I, I have weighed myself probably every second day, but I don't think it's necessary because after two weeks, you know, after two days of hard dieting, my weight can actually be higher than it was before. So I know personally that it's all to do with water weight, it's to do with how many carbs I've ingested, how much glycogen I'm holding. There's a shitload of variables when it comes to your weight, but what you can't change is your measurements, all right? You really can't. So with that said, like I've shown you, here we are. We're about to fill in column number three, which I'm really excited about. So right now I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get my measurements and I'll see you guys back here in about 10 minutes, all right? Peace. Next minute. Okay, all right, we've got the measurements. To be honest, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really happy. Here they are here, I've just taken them, but they're extremely messy, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put them on my little table here, and you're gonna watch me, so let's do that. I, uh, I do I, I do have a little bit of OCD, I'm not going to lie, and the fact that I have to change from a black to a blue pen halfway through really doesn't agree with me, but what do you do? Beggars can't be choosers. 
let's do it. Alright, so for anyone that's wondering, these are my measurements. Neck. We started at 17 inches, four weeks later we're at 16 inches. Shoulders, we started at 53.25, four weeks later we're at 51.25. Chest was 47 inches, now it's 45.5. Waist was 36 inches. Two weeks ago it was 34.5. Today it's 33.5. Left arm, 16.5 inches at the start. Today it's 16.25. Right arm, 16.5. Today it's 16.25. Left thigh started at 25.5 inches. Today it's at 25 even. Right thigh, once again, 25.5. Today it's at 25 inches even. Left calf started at 15.5. Today it's 15.5. Right calf 15.5. Today is 15.5. And so overall, overall it seems in the last two weeks, my waist has come down. My chest has actually increased by a quarter of an inch and everything else is pretty much the same except for my thighs. Now, I wasn't gonna mention this because it's an excuse, but I have been injured. Not only my knee, but also my fucking hamstring. And so, I haven't been able to train legs these four weeks. I've probably trained them once properly, and then since then, uh, this little injury's been flaring up, so I'll go and start to do squats or leg press, and I can't, so I'll, I'll do calves instead. And to be honest, guys, I've, I've pretty much put all of my effort that I normally put into leg day into doing calves. So, because I just really don't want them to get any smaller, I'm not gonna lie, like, 15 and a half inches is the smallest I've pretty much ever been, and so the leaner I get, the smaller they're gonna get, so I thought I'd better start training them. I hadn't trained calves in two years, all right? I hadn't trained them in two years, so, in two years, without training them, they had shrunk from 16 down to 15 and a half, which is not too bad, you know? I gotta say, I gotta admit, as you guys know, calf development, is very, very dependent on your genetics, unfortunately. But anyways, that is the measurements. Progress pictures, I took them this morning. They're right here. Okay, once again, like I keep saying, one from the front, one from this side, one from the back, and one from the other side. So that is the progress pictures, that is the measurements, that is the weight. The last thing we're gonna talk about is diet. I didn't touch on diet last time too much because I forgot, to be honest. I watched the video back and I was like, shit, I said I was gonna look through my macros and next minute I start talking about something else and put my phone down. So, to be honest, I wanna tell you guys, let's look at the macros, but I don't have any macros. I don't have any data, okay? <laughs> so, personally, I've done this so many times. I've bulked so many times, I've cut so many times. I can eyeball my food, I really can. And I'm eating pretty much the same stuff every single day. The one thing that really helps me with dieting is intermittent fasting, okay? And so, for me to talk about my diet, really the only thing I can really talk about is the structure of my diet, okay? Because I don't know exactly how many grams of protein or carbs or fats I'm having, how many calories, but I would say it's under 2,500 calories. That seems to be the amount that, you know, if I go too far under that, my performance dips, my, my, my strength dips, you know, I feel weak all the time. 2,500 calories for my body at six foot one and, you know, 95 or so kilo seems to be a pretty good amount to cut on. I wouldn't want to go any lower than that. If I had to say calories, 2,500. If I had to say protein, definitely at least 200 grams a day. And the rest of my food is, is made up of carbs and fats. Intermittent fasting, the way I've been doing it. I'll get up at 6.30, I'll get to work at 7.00. I won't have my first meal until 12 or 1, okay? I finish work at 7 o'clock, I've had two meals, I'll come home, have a pre-workout, go to the gym, train, come home, after probably having eaten only about a thousand calories, trained, and then I'll have my, you know, big meal for the day. You want to call that carb backloading? Do it, okay? Because that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm, I'm training on basically protein and fats and then after I train, I'll come home and load up my carbs to you know, replenish that glycogen. So, yeah, uh, there's, there's so many ways to do it. There's so many ways to do it. I've got a plan, I've put it in place, and it's working. 
I want to help you guys do the exact same thing. So anyways, I am actually sticking to macros, I am sticking to calories, I'm just not recording it, okay? But for you guys who have never done it before, you, you need a plan, you need to trust the plan, and so that's why I'm going to advocate for you to track your calories and macros. Not only that, but you get so much knowledge. I know all the stuff about food, I know how many, I can, I can look at a meal with four or five different ingredients in it and still be able to calculate pretty accurately how many fats, carbs and protein are in that because it's just through experience. It is through, it's through practice, it's through experience. I have used MyFitnessPal religiously for three years. Up until about two years ago when I decided no, I don't need it anymore, I can eyeball my stuff now. As long as I stick under a certain amount of calories, 2500, and as long as I stay un above a certain amount of protein, which is 200 grams, I'm sweet. Anyways guys, that is the update for day 28. We've got the photos in the bank, we've got the measurements, we've got the weight, and I cannot wait to just knuckle down these next two weeks and show you guys an epic six week transformation. Because it's coming man. It really is. I'm not going to show you guys right now, but uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there. Like I said, I did say at the start, my goal is to get my waist down from 36 inches where it was at the beginning of this, which is way too high down to like 32 or below and, and that would just completely change the way my physique looks. So at the moment, 36 inches at the start, 34 and a half after two weeks, 33 and a half after four weeks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my fucking very best to get that measurement to 32 inches by the time we get to this column. So that's the goal. So I know I've talked too much, I hope you've learned something, if not, well, it's not my fault. If you've made it to the end of this video, hit the like button. Just do it. For me. And tell me about it. Give me a comment too. And also, if you are new here and you want to see the final results from the six week transformation as well as the whole host of other shit that comes out on my channel, hit the subscribe button. And that's all I gotta say. So until next time guys, have a great night or a great day wherever you are in the world. Train hard, eat well, and I'll see you guys in the next one.